There are sharks that glow in the dark. For example, swell sharks. They live in the dark ocean depths, almost 1,700 feet under the surface. No one knows why exactly, but they emit a fluorescent glow only other swell sharks can see. Scientists detected the glow because they used filters that blocked out yellow light. They think that could be the way for these big fish to communicate with their buddies. This glow helps sharks fight infections on a microbial level. Cowbirds have secret passwords they use to recognize each other. They're a specific type of parasite bird since they lay their eggs in other bird species' nests. The young cowbirds have an inner mechanism where they recognize their species singing, like some sort of secret password only they know. That's how they manage to find others of their kind. A grizzly bear has an incredibly strong bite. It may look cute, but if you're close to this big guy, you better stay out of reach of its sharp claws and especially its mouth. Its bite force is more than 8 million pascals, which means it can crush a bowling ball. Some animals have skin-deep stripes and others have more superficial ones. Tigers are in the first group. Not only is their fur striped, but their skin is as well. It's the same with some other furry big cats, like snow leopards. Giraffes and zebras are in the second group, since they have patterns only on their coats. Speaking of zebras, do you think they're black with white stripes or white with black stripes? At first, it really looks like the second option is correct. Their black stripes mostly end towards the inside of their legs and on their bellies, and the rest of it is white. But that's not true. Surprisingly, they're black with white stripes. All of their fur, both white and black, grows from follicles that have something called melanocyte cells. All animals have these cells. They produce a pigment called melanin, and it gives color to their hair and skin. When it comes to zebras, chemical messengers tell which melanocytes send pigment to which area of fur. That's why zebras have a black and white pattern. But white is not actually its own pigment. It's an absence of melanin. So black is their default color. Koalas have fingerprints that are so close to ours that they could even taint crime scenes. It doesn't seem like they have a lot in common with humans, but take a closer look at their hands. They have distinctive loops and arches. So if any koalas want to do something illegal, it would be a good idea for them to wear gloves. Ghost crabs growl when they're around creatures they don't like or find threatening. They do it using teeth in their stomachs. First, they'll let you know they'll defend themselves if you try anything by showing you their claws. If that doesn't work, they'll go for fearsome growling noises like dogs. But the noise is coming from rubbing their three elongated hard teeth inside their stomach. Ghost crabs produce the same noise when they're grinding up food. Speaking of teeth, did you know narwhal tusks are actually some sort of an inside-out tooth? Unlike the majority of other whales, narwhals are the ones that come with a large tusk or tooth that grows from the inside of their jaw. It has up to 10 million nerve endings, and they're unprotected, which means its tusk is very sensitive to any type of contact. It's almost like a piece of skin, because tusks usually don't have many nerve endings. Up to 95% of humans are right-handed, and it's the same with bottlenose dolphins. There are even more right-handed ones among them than among humans. During one study, scientists found that bottlenose dolphins turn to their left side over 99% of the time, which means they're right-handed. They place their right side and right eye closer to the ocean floor as they go for prey, such as squids, shrimps, or smaller fish. More cool facts from the ocean. Did you know humpback whales use bubbles when they go after their prey? You might think they don't need any special method considering how large they are, but when they're lurking for prey in the open waters, these whales team up and use something called a bubble net technique. While swimming in an upward spiral, they blow bubbles underwater. These bubbles make it difficult for fish to escape. The oldest evidence we have of domesticated cats dates up to 12,000 years ago. Researchers discovered this almost 20 years ago when they were digging through an ancient village in Cyprus. They found cat bones right next to human ones, which suggested they were close even when their lives came to an end. 
Humans were hunters, so they domesticated dogs first, somewhere up to 29,000 years ago. Dogs helped them catch other animals, but they didn't think they needed cats until they started to settle down and store surplus crops. Mice became frequent guests in grain stores, so cats came in handy in those times. Puffins are quite innovative when they want to scratch their bodies. They can surely be proud of their stunning beaks, but they obviously think it's not enough for scratching. Researchers noticed they tend to spontaneously take a small wooden stick to scratch an itchy spot. There's a special type of ant that only lives in a small part of Manhattan. The Broadway medians at the 63rd and 76th Street is the area these crawling critters decided was the best spot for them. The Manhattan ant looks like it's from Europe, but no European species can actually match it. Hey Potterheads, can you believe there's a thing like chocolate frog? Well, not quite, but it looks like it. New Guinea and Australia weren't always separated. They spent millions of years together until about 12,000 years ago, rising sea levels divided them. Since they were together for so long, some animals and plants still inhabit both areas, including green tree frogs. These frogs have spread really far and wide, and some of them, who live in hot, swampy regions surrounded by plenty of crocodiles, actually look like they're made of chocolate. We all know flamingos for their specific color, but they're not actually pink. They're born gray, and that's how they would stay if it weren't for their diet of blue-green algae and shrimp. These foods have a specific natural dye, which is why flamingo feathers turn pink over time. These little Tasmanian devils grow up and leave their moms. They socialize together, forming bonds that last for the rest of their lives. Not only them, cows also have stronger social ties than we think. They like to socialize, and they make long-lasting friendships. One research even discovered their heart rates significantly increase as a sign of stress when they're separated from their BFFs. Imagine you could simply freeze yourself solid during the cold winter days instead of listening to your teeth chatter and trying to tighten your jacket. That's what frogs can do. Aquatic frogs mostly hibernate underwater and spend most of the winter at the bottom of a pond, lake, or some other body of water. Toads and frogs are generally cold-blooded, which means the temperature of their body takes on the temperature of their surroundings. So, frogs can freeze during the winter because of a high concentration of sugar or glucose in their vital organs. Once they unfreeze, they continue as if nothing happened. Octopuses have three hearts and blue blood. They can move at speeds of 25 miles per hour, and they spray ink that not only blurs the predator's visual field, but actually harms them. Also, they have nine brains, the central one and eight smaller brains located in their arms. That's why their arms can open a shellfish while the central brain is busy doing something else. An octopus even tastes with its arms. They have cells in their suckers that enable the arms to touch and taste in a way that they detect chemicals marine creatures produce. That way, an octopus can distinguish prey from rocks. Squirrels' teeth never stop growing, but the animals wear them down by gnawing on nuts and other hard foods. The front of the rodent's teeth is actually orange. It's because they're covered in special tough enamel. Bet you're glad you don't have that to deal with. Some bird species don't mind munching on chili peppers. That's because they can't feel the heat. Peppers burn your mouth because they contain a special chemical, capsaicin. But birds don't have the taste buds needed to feel its effects. The rhino's horn is made of hair, or at least the same protein that makes up your hair and nails. This protein is called keratin. Such a horn is kind of unique since other animals have horns with a bony center. The woodpecker can peck the wood 20 times per second. This pace is almost too high for the human eye to notice. How much wood would a woodpecker peck if a woodpecker could peck wood? The number of pecks often reaches a total of 8,000 to 12,000 a day. A starfish does have eyes, one on the end of each of its arms. These eyes are light-sensitive groups of cells. Frogs don't need to drink water. Instead, they have an area known as the drinking patch. It's on their bellies and thighs. They use it to absorb water directly through the skin. Well, that could save some time. Most caterpillar species have around 4,000 muscles in their body. 
and almost 250 of them are in the head alone. Christmas tree worms are much more beautiful than you can imagine. But even though the pines look awesome, two-thirds of the worm's body is hidden in a calcium carbonite tube. And the point of this is… I don't have one. Narwhal's famous tusks are actually their teeth that are kind of turned inside out. These unicorns of the sea have just two teeth. And in males, one of them grows right through their upper lip. Unlike your teeth, this one is tough inside and sensitive and soft on the outside. The anteater doesn't have teeth, but it's not a problem. This creature has a super long tongue. This tongue helps the animal lap up more than 35,000 termites and ants every day. Well, that's one way to lick hunger. The flea can jump more than 200 times their body length. If humans had such an ability, they would jump as high as the Empire State Building. Woohoo! The red eyed tree frog's eggs can hatch earlier if they sense their environment isn't safe. Small animals with fast metabolism see in slow mo. This helps them escape larger creatures. Koalas' fingerprints are very, very similar to the human ones. Sometimes these animals' fingerprints even get confused at crime scenes. Probably in Australia. The hippo's sweat is pink and not exactly sweat. It's a reddish, oily fluid. Its function is to not cool the body, but to moisturize the skin and protect it. This fluid also functions as an antibiotic. So, you get sunburn or cut, you can smear a hippo all over you. Polar bear skin is black, and the hairs of their coat are hollow and almost see-through. These animals have fur growing even on the bottom of their paws. This gives them a better grip on ice and protects against cold. Some species of tarantulas, some of the largest spiders in the world, can live without food for more than two years. I still think they're creepy. Platypuses close their eyes while kissing. Uh, I mean, swimming. They have special folds of skin covering their ears and eyes. They prevent water from getting inside. These animals' nostrils also have a watertight seal. Emus can't walk backwards, but scientists aren't sure why. These flightless birds are the only ones that have calf muscles. Emus can sprint really fast. They can also travel long distances, but they can't back up. Crocodiles can't move their tongue because it's attached to the mouth roof. It keeps the throat closed and protects the animal's airway. Water snakes, dolphins, whales, alligators, crocodiles, and turtles can drown. It'll happen if they stay underwater for too long. These animals can't breathe in the water. They can just hold their breath for a very long time. Only one species of birds can fly backwards. That's hummingbirds. Hey, go talk to the emu. These tiny birds can also beat their wings up to 80 times per second. Despite what elephant shrews look like, these small animals are more closely related to elephants than shrews. Maybe that's why they have their trademark trunk-like noses. Elephant shrews use them to munch on insects. True enough. Cats, as well as other felines, can't taste sweet things. They don't have the taste buds needed for that. Too bad, more for me. Flamingos can only eat with their heads upside down. That's why their lower bill is massive and their upper bill isn't fixed. Such an arrangement is perfect for upside-down feeding. But it's the opposite of what other birds have. It's not easy being pink. Tiger skin is as striped as their fur. That's all I have to say about that. When toucans sleep, they curl into pretty tight balls. These birds can turn their head so that their tail covers their head and the beak rests on the back. So yeah, they have a ball. The ostrich has some of the largest eyes in the animal kingdom. They're more massive than a bird's brain. Each eye is as big as a billiard ball. All clownfish get born male, but in some circumstances, they can turn into females. This change is irreversible. Unlike most fish, when seahorses mate, they do it for life. Even cuter, when the mates travel, they move side by side and often hold on to each other's tails. The male usually gets stuck schlepping the luggage. Termites never sleep. They don't need to recharge their batteries. But they can eat 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, on your house. 
The sloth needs up to two weeks to digest its food. Hey, take your time, no hurry, nothing on the schedule. Dogs' nose prints can be used for their identification. They are similar to human fingerprints and unique for each animal. Owls don't have eyeballs. Instead, they have eye tubes that don't move in the eye sockets. Penguins don't have external ears, but their hearing is especially sharp. Especially when they're on the lookout for polar bears. Shh, let's not tell them. Jellyfish are up to 98% water. That's why when they get washed ashore, their bodies can evaporate into the air after just a few hours. If a traffic jam happens underwater, an alligator will always give way to a manatee. Nice manners. Grizzly bears have such a strong bite that they can crush a bowling ball. So it's smart just to let them win. Giant pandas aren't picky about their sleeping spots. They usually fall asleep wherever they are, in most cases, right on the forest floor. The giant panda's newborn cubs are tiny. They weigh like a small cup of coffee and are smaller than a mouse. The red handfish can walk along the ocean floor with the help of its hands. But of course, they are not hands, but evolved fins, really. Cats don't usually meow at each other. A study has shown the felines use this way of communication mostly to get attention from us humans. And it works. Sloths can't shiver. It's not that they're too busy digesting that two-week-old meal. Their fur is sometimes covered with algae. And when they get too hot or too cold, their metabolism shuts down. During the hard times, immortal jellyfish transform themselves back into their younger state. Once they reach the stage when they're nothing but a blob of tissue, like me, these creatures start to grow again. And this process can apparently repeat again and again. The closest living relatives of the T-Rex are chickens and ostriches. Don't turn your back. The moray eel has another set of jaws that can extend from his throat. First, the main jaws close around an unlucky sea creature. Then the additional set grabs the eel's future meal with backward-pointing razor-sharp teeth. And after that, the captured animal gets dragged back into the eel's throat. I just lost my appetite. Some species of snails have hairy shells. Thanks to these hairs, snails can better stick to wet surfaces. When humpback whales hunt, they often gather in a group and apply a bubble net tactic to catch their food. The bubbles don't let the schools of fish get away. Snow leopards can't roar like other large felines. It has to do with their less developed vocal cords. But these animals can meow, growl, hiss, and even purr. Not to drift away from their group while napping, sea otters hold hands. They can also entangle themselves in giant seaweed for the same purpose. Hey, it kelps. Lions are often called the king of the prairie. I thought it was the king of the jungle. And still, up to 90% of all the hunting in the pride is done by the females. The males are in charge of protecting the territory and the pride members. And they make the delicious potato salad known as Hakuna Matator. Cats are famous for their uncanny ability to move their ears. All because kitties have 32 muscles in each outer ear. Some shark species can glow in the dark. Unfortunately, only other sharks can see this greenish glimmer. You have up to 8,000 taste buds, but your pooch has just a bit over 1,500. The blue jay can imitate other birds. Its favorite is a hawk's call. The blue jay uses it to scare away other birds from its territory. Slow lorries are insanely cute and just as treacherous. They're the only known venomous primates. They have a gland in the crook of their inner arm. It secretes toxins that can cause unpleasant consequences in people. The heart of beast has an amazing evasion tactic. To run away from other animals, they move in a zigzag pattern. Bottlenose dolphins have names for one another. Those are specific whistles. Hey, Bob. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Dolly. Hey, boys. And thanks for all the fish. Giraffes have long, and I mean it, black tongues. 
Scientists suppose this color might protect the tongue from getting sunburned. Well, that's all I got. See ya! Fantastic beasts live in movies, books, and our reality. And some of the weirdest creatures live in the ocean. They're called sea slugs. Some of them have the ability of plants to feed on sunlight. Others look like dragons and are poisonous, like snakes. Let's study some of the most incredible species. So the first one on our list is an animal that hangs out in the ocean, eats algae, and acts like a plant. A unique variety of green sea slugs can photosynthesize. Simply put, it can feed on sunlight and it will be enough to eat until it's full. But that's not even the coolest part. This creature, which looks like a snail with a green leaf on its back, gets the features of plants by changing its genes. The green sea slug gets its photosynthesizing abilities from the algae it eats. And here's how it happens. When the slug bites off the sea plant, it also consumes a small portion of cells called chloroplasts. The slug's intestines absorb these particles and connect them with the slug's cells. Chloroplasts mix with the animal's genes and, with the help of chemical compounds, allow the animal to produce chlorophyll, a green pigment that captures sunlight. The more chloroplasts this creature eats, the better its photosynthesis abilities are. By the way, these cells not only allow the slug to feed on light, but also color it in green pigment, which helps the animals disguise themselves among the grass and hide from predators. Some species of these sea inhabitants can eat algae just once, and it will be enough to feed on sun rays for the rest of their lives. By the way, they don't live long, just one year. Scientists observed how sea slugs didn't eat anything after absorbing chloroplasts. The animals simply sunbathed in the sun while their cells absorbed the sun's energy and then converted it into food. At the same time, the slugs multiplied, interacted with each other, and led an active lifestyle. The researchers also found that this ability could be inherited. That is, small slugs already had algae genes despite the fact that they had never eaten them. We've just met one species of these strange animals. And in total, there are about 2,000 kinds of sea slugs, and they're all unique. First of all, they differ from one another with their colorful patterns. Sea slugs are some of the most colorful creatures in the world. Yellow, mother of pearl, blue, purple, spotted, and many others. Some of them seem to appear with a negative color, while others are painted in acidic psychedelic colors. However, slugs themselves don't even suspect how beautiful they are because they don't distinguish colors. The bright patterns target predators, warning them that these slugs are toxic. Some species, such as the blue dragon, are so venomous that they pose a serious danger even to humans. So don't touch them if you see them in the ocean. But the most crazy thing about these creatures is how they produce their venom. Blue dragons are those rare animals who hunt prey bigger than them in size. Moreover, the creatures they love to eat look much weirder than the sea slug. They're like guests from another dimension. These are the pelagic siphonophore, the blue button, and the violet snail. In addition to their strange appearance, these creatures have venomous tentacles. But the blue dragon is not afraid of them. It uses their venom against them. It absorbs the toxins of these little monsters, concentrates it in itself, and makes it even stronger. The sea slug then uses this venom to sting prey and enemies. Therefore, many predators avoid the dragon if they see it in the water. In humans, the sting of the blue dragon can cause nausea, allergies, and other health problems. Besides the coloring, all sea slugs have different tentacles. Green slugs, as you've seen, have small legs, but the tentacles of the blue dragon resemble wings. The limbs of some slugs look like spikes. There's a species that looks like a mutant jellyfish with wide tentacles. This is the lion's mane nudibranch. Its fins and its head are like a hood. While hunting, it wraps the prey from all sides and squeezes it. Japanese slugs with wavy tentacles are also found in nature. And by the way, these slugs can regenerate their limbs, hearts, and even heads. Scientists watched such a creature lose its head, but its body and the cut-off head were still alive. 
This is probably the only animal of this size that can fully restore its body after the loss of vital organs. All these differences depend on the slug's lifestyle. Some like to swim in the water, and others crawl along the seabed. Food preferences also affect the development of their body shape. And the diet of sea slugs is also quite strange. Some sea slugs eat algae and feed on sunlight. Others eat jellyfish and sea anemones. And some species, like blue dragons, can eat one another. Now look at this beast. It seems like another species of sea slug, but actually, it's something different. This is a sea pig, which is a type of sea cucumber. Their difference is that the cucumber moves along the seabed using caterpillar-like feet, and the pig walks on longer legs. This creature, the size of an adult's finger, can't swim, even though it lives in water. It just walks on the seabed in search of food. This transparent beast that looks like an elephant and a jellyfish does an important job here. It doesn't hunt or hurt anybody. It's just chilling and feeding on carrion. By eating decaying materials, sea pigs make a significant contribution to the ocean's ecosystem, purifying the water from rot and biological debris. They are like vacuum cleaners that clean the ocean of garbage. This creature is harmless, but predatory fish are afraid to approach it because of its disgusting taste. In addition, the bodies of sea pigs are impregnated with poison dangerous to other marine life, but not to everyone. Watching these pigs, scientists often see how small king crabs cling to them. These beings are easy prey for predators, so they need protection. Sea pigs perform this function perfectly, but still they have enemies that can harm them, and these are parasites. Although sea pigs are not rare animals, scientists know little about them. The reason is the strange bodies of these marine inhabitants. They are very fragile organisms living under high pressure. If you try to raise them to the surface, they will fall apart like artificial jelly. Therefore, you won't find them in aquariums and laboratories. All scientists can do is observe them in their habitat. For this reason, we still don't know the lifespan of these fantastic creatures. We descend into the ocean's black depths to see one of the creepiest creatures on the planet. It has wrinkled skin, weak muscles and bones, and it looks as if it was already born old. The blood shines through its thin skin and paints the whole body in a pinkish hue. However, this weak body is compensated by powerful jaws that protrude from the creature's mouth, making it look like a monster from a sci-fi movie. So, this is the goblin shark, one of the most mysterious fish in the world. This monster is not as fast as its relatives, so it always uses the element of surprise during hunting. It quietly swims up to the prey, hiding in the darkness, and then captures it with its powerful jaws filled with about a hundred sharp teeth. They can't see well in the dark, but have electroreceptors on their long noses. Sharks use them to feel the heartbeat of their prey. Goblin sharks live in the Atlantic, Pacific, and Indian Oceans. But most often, people see them off the coast of Japan. However, scientists still don't know their exact habitat despite the fact that they are one of the most ancient creatures on Earth. Goblin sharks have been swimming in the dark depths for more than 120 million years, and during this time, they haven't changed their appearance. When we think of a jellyfish, most of us probably picture a floating umbrella-like creature with stinging tentacles. But these see-through creatures are a lot more interesting than we give them credit for. Some might even hold the secret to eternal life. Let's start with some basics. Jellyfish have different life stages, sort of like how a frog starts as a tadpole. Most of them begin as eggs and turn into larvae, moving with the flow until they find a safe spot to calm down and grow. These larvae then transform into polyps, and eventually into free-floating young jellyfish called medusae. This whole journey for most jellyfish goes in one direction, from young to old. However, there's one jellyfish that thinks outside the box when it comes to its life cycle. On that note, meet Turotopsis dornii. This one also has a catchy nickname, the never-ending jellyfish. That's because it can do something most creatures can't. At least that we know of. 
You know how butterflies evolved from quirky looking caterpillars to these beautiful insects? Imagine an elderly butterfly deciding it misses its former stage, and then poof, it turns into a caterpillar, and thus young again. Sounds like some sort of magic trick, but these jellyfish might be able to do just that. When life becomes a bit too difficult under the seas, like during food shortages or when it has injuries, this jellyfish doesn't just quit. Instead, it transforms into a small blob which eventually becomes its younger self, ready to start over again. This whole operation is what scientists call transdifferentiation. A big word for a process that's incredibly rare. And it's a bit like they've got a natural reset button. To meet the minds behind this incredible find, we'll have to travel back to the 1980s. During those times, some students were observing random jellyfish expecting the usual life cycle. Earlier stages of development, growth, and then reproduction. They were in for a surprise though. Instead of following the script, these jellyfish started their life over again and again. And thus, the legend of the never-ending jellyfish was born. A team of scientists got curious about this jellyfish's secret, so they took a close look at the jellyfish DNA. You see, DNA is like a massive recipe book. Every page tells our cells how to work and keep us alive. As it turns out, this jellyfish recipe book has some very special notes on how to stay young forever. The forever young jellyfish has special tweaks in its genes that make it flexible in terms of staying young and living a long time. They have features in their basic code with instructions for repairing DNA, keeping cells fresh and talking to each other, protecting cells from damage and looking after the tips of their chromosomes. Scientists also noticed that when this jellyfish feels like getting a bit younger, it changes the way its genes work. It might be nice if we could steal these genetic instructions and somehow replicate them in humans. Truth is, for the time being, we can't follow this jellyfish's lifestyle and turn back time. While the whole turning young again thing is pretty amazing, it doesn't mean they're invincible. They can't dodge hungry fish or curious turtles. Their endless life has a catch. It's only about age. On the downside, these creatures are pretty delicate, so studying them is like handling a fragile artifact. But with much care and precision, an Asian scientist has been studying them closely since the 1990s. He's seen some specimens rewind their lives up to 10 times in just two years. These little wonders started their journey in the Mediterranean. These days, they can be found all over the world. How these tiny creatures became such world travelers is equally as amazing. Ships might be the unsuspecting Ubers for these critters. They may hitch a ride in the ballast water of ships going from one port to another. Their size and see-through bodies mean they go unnoticed, and their appearance can change depending on their address. Some feature just eight tentacles, while others can sport 20 or more. These differences mean they are also highly adaptable too. At first glance, a little jellyfish traveling around the globe might not seem like a big deal, but here's why it's important. Every creature, big or small, has an impact. While these immortal jellyfish haven't influenced their new environments like other invasive species, their silent journey is a reminder. It shows us how we, as humans, unknowingly influence nature. Despite its amazing capabilities, this particular species of jellyfish doesn't have a brain, or a heart for that matter, or bones, or even blood. Instead, they're mostly water. How do they function without a brain or a heart? Well, the secret's in their cap. They have this unique network of nerve cells right on the outer layer of their cap. They also come with a big, bright red tummy that helps them digest their food. It doesn't mean we should underestimate them. In fact, these jellyfish are quite the predators. They love to munch mostly on tiny creatures like zooplankton. But their diet also includes little fish eggs, sometimes even mollusks. At times, the older ones even fancy eating other jellyfish. They use their tentacles like fishing nets. So they reach out, sting their food, and then guide it into their mouths. 
These jellyfish aren't the only creatures that might be able to mesh with their timeline. Tardigrades might be a word you're not necessarily familiar with, but they're also called water bears or moss piglets. They're these tiny, chubby, eight-legged animals with cute, flat heads. Tardigrades might even remind you of a mini version of a caterpillar. Now, what's truly interesting about these creatures isn't their looks. These little guys are known to be super resistant. They can even handle the harsh conditions of outer space. And here's how they do it. When life conditions get a bit too complicated for them to handle, tardigrades just stop playing the game. They go into this very relaxed mode known as cryptobiosis, where they cease almost all of their internal functions. In this state, they squeeze out nearly all the water from their bodies, tuck in their heads and legs, and roll up like a little ball. Back in the 70s, scientists figured out that there are four main things that make water bears go into this deep sleep mode. Drying out, freezing up, running out of air, or when things get way too salty. During their nap, these little moss piglets basically turn off almost all their energy. They've got this special stuff in their cells called TDPs for short. When they squeeze out all their water, these TDPs build a protective shield around their cells like an invisible force field. And because of this, whenever they find water again, they just wake up, stretch out, and go about their business like nothing happened. Some lobsters can stick around for a whole century too. If you like to enjoy lobster for dinner, don't worry. You're probably feasting on a youngster around five to seven years old. These cool critters can't technically live forever, but they never stop growing either. As they get bigger, every couple of years they shed their old shell and grow a new one. Bigger lobster means older lobster. The largest one spotted was about as long as a skateboard and the chubbiest he was about as heavy as the office chair you're probably sitting on. Not all lobsters can reach such long lifespans. It got scientists curious, and they looked a bit into their environment to check for clues. It seems that those guys that enjoy warmer waters can't make it that long, but those in chilly waters like American lobsters can go on and on for ages. The problem with warm water is that it seems to speed up their metabolism which is what makes lobsters reach the end of their lives sooner. Also, as they get older, this whole shell growing process slows down a bit. It also seems to take more and more energy. The energy it takes can be so much that some lobsters just get too tired. Of course, there are other things they need to watch out for too. They've got to dodge hungry critters, including us humans. Imagine an endless expanse of snow and ice. In it, a hapless squirrel is chasing after an acorn. Are you thinking of Scrat from the animated movie Ice Age? Over the years, the American franchise won the hearts of countless little fans. And big ones, let's be fair. But not all of its characters were real animals, right? I mean, there's no way a saber-toothed squirrel actually existed. That's what the scientists who saw the original movie in 2002 also thought. Three years later, they had to admit they were wrong. That's when paleontologists revealed a fossil of a prehistoric mammal they had found in Argentina. It had a narrow snout and long fangs. The animal belonged to a now-extinct group of mammals that lived in South America and possibly Antarctica. A land of ice and long fangs. It all adds up. The saber-toothed squirrel was real after all. Ice Age follows the adventures of three animals, Manny, Sid, and Diego, a woolly mammoth, a ground sloth, and a saber-toothed cat. They're trying to reunite a young human with his tribe. The plot is fictional, but all these animals really coexisted with humans during the last Ice Age. The human tribe in the movie belongs to the Neanderthals. They shared the planet with us and Denny Sylvans, who lived in Asia. These early humans mostly inhabited the European continent, they disappeared some 40,000 years ago. Scientific evidence suggests that the Neanderthals interacted with the woolly mammoth. In the movie, this is Manny. At first, he's a bit grumpy, but in the end, we learn that he's a kind and brave character. In the second movie, he meets another mammoth called Ellie. Before that, Manny thought he was the last of his kind. His worries were justified. Scientists estimate that the last woolly mammoth walked the Earth some 4,000 years ago. 
This was around the time the Egyptians were building the Great Pyramids. These animals were the size of African elephants. They are the mammoth's relatives still living today. This now extinct species once roamed the cold tundra of Asia, Europe, and North America. They traveled in herds and had no natural predators, with the notable exception of humans. Scientists believe that overhunting combined with the rising global temperatures spelled the end for these huge creatures. In the movie, Manny made friends with Sid. He's a carefree, talkative sloth who was left behind by his family when they migrated. The scriptwriters got this part right. Jefferson's ground sloths originated in South America and migrated across the Isthmus of Panama around 5 million years ago. They migrated north across the Americas all the way to the Arctic. Sid is small in the movie, but his species was gigantic. Ground sloths were heavier and larger than modern bears. Just imagine a sloth with its long claws that is 9 feet in length. That's more than three times bigger than the largest sloths alive today. The final member of the merry crew was Diego. He started off as a bad guy because he belonged to a pack of saber-toothed cats and was on a mission of snatching the human offspring. In the end, Diego had a change of heart and befriended Manny and Sid. His initial personality matched perfectly with his species' temper. The American scimitar cat was an apex predator during the last ice age. It belonged to an extinct branch of the feline family tree. People sometimes call it a tiger, but the species has no living relatives today. Smilodons were most similar to lions in appearance, but they were twice as heavy. They roamed North and South America some 20,000 years ago. The saber-toothed cat's most notable physical trait was its long canine teeth. They were up to 8 inches long. One of the animal groups these ancient felines preyed on was freaky mammals. That's their screen name, of course. In reality, these were large mammals that lived in South America. In Greek, their name means long neck. Their most distinctive feature was a short trunk that bent downwards. The animal used it to carry branches. It was taller than a human and resembled a camel. Its skin was yellow and brown. In the movie, large herds of these animals migrated to warmer climates. Researchers believe this was the case in real life as well. Other animals that didn't like the heat were paleotheriums. Mr. and Mrs. Start rest on ice sheets at the beginning of the movie Ice Age, The Meltdown. Then the ice cracks and Mrs. starts to fall into the water. The likable creatures belonged to an extinct species of hoofed animals. They were relatives of today's horses and tapirs. These animals were the size of a goat or a sheep. The Stark family had thick fur, which comes in handy in cold climates. In 2016, paleotheriums made another appearance. Only this time, they had light purple fur. Do you remember the animals that looked like armadillos or turtles? They appeared in every Ice Age movie. In real life, the cute shelled animals were called glyptos. These stout animals had four legs and could move remarkably fast. Real-life glyphodonts were also on the move. They started off in South America more than 3 million years ago. They moved north to what is today Colombia. Unfortunately, these ancient shelled animals didn't survive the last ice age. The smaller and more lightly armored armadillos are their closest relatives nowadays. When early paleontologists found the first fossil of a glypto in 1814, they thought it belonged to the ground sloth. Sid's relatives were quite popular back then. Another animal that is closely related to a sloth is an anteater. It appeared in numerous Ice Age movies, but there's something odd about the way they looked on the big screen. Have you noticed how their trunks are long, like a mammoth, and are set above the mouth? This is not the case with real-life anteaters. The trunk is actually their snout and the mouth is a part of it. The species had survived the last ice age. Giant anteaters live today across South and Central America. Rhinoceros are also alive and well nowadays. In Ice Age, they were represented through the characters of Carl and Frank. They have a particular liking for dandelions, which were rare plants. When Sid eats their last dandelions, he had to run for his life from the rhinos. He bumps into Manny, who saves him. 
In ancient times, woolly rhinoceros inhabited a vast territory spanning nearly all of Europe and Asia. They didn't cross into North America via the Bering Land Bridge. Scientists believe this was because there wasn't enough grass in the area. They might seem tough, but these rhinos were herbivores. That means they ate plants, just like all five species of rhinoceros do today. The authors of Ice Age often mix creatures from North America with animals that lived in South America. One species that definitely couldn't have existed alongside other characters was the dodo bird. It lived only in one place, the island of Mauritius, off the east coast of Africa. This is where the locals saw the last specimen in 1681. The species was 26 million years old at the time it disappeared from Earth. At least the creators of Ice Age got the timing right. In the movie, dodos are feisty, flightless birds. They choose not to migrate with other animals because they consider themselves superior. Instead, they stock up on food for the coming cold spell. They seem just as determined as Scrat when it comes to finally getting his hands on the acorn.